This time I've got an old Oral-B Triumph Professional Care electric toothbrush. Now these things were damn expensive. It's rechargeable, but the battery eventually fails and it's not designed to have the battery replaced, but I'm gonna show you how to do it and save yourself some money. Let's check it out. This is something I didn't think I'd ever have to fix. It's, a, uh, it's an Oral-B toothbrush, electric toothbrush. This is an old one, a Triumph Professional Care. This thing's gotta be probably 20 or 30 years old at least are pretty darn close to it. Uh, battery is gone bad. In it. it says full charge, but it will go down to zero like really quick. Now these use what's called an inductive charging. So basically it just sits in this little charging base like that. And this has got the one, one half of the coil around it here. And then the other half of it sits in the base and it charges up a rechargeable battery. And these units here, I never could figure out what the heck this thing was. But what this is, this is actually a switching power supply because it's 100 to 240 volts. But this little triangle shaped thing, well that's on the bottom. That, that fits into the bottom here so that you can actually unscrew the battery. I don't know whether it's just gonna be a simple battery replacement or whether the batteries are soldered in. That I don't know. So we're gonna find out how to change the battery on one of these things using the built-in tool that comes with every single one and most people probably never even figured out what it was even though I think it tells you stop don't cut don't take it in the shower recycling oh okay so to recycle you you remove the battery but we're not going to recycle this we want to fix it I don't know whether the whole piece slides out or whether just the bottom comes off. Never taken one apart before. I imagine it's just got some nickel cadmium or or nickel metal hydrate batteries in here. Okay, so that cap comes off and there's the battery. There's the charging coil right there. The battery is in the bottom here. I wonder if this has to come off the top. I, I get the suspicion that this thing comes apart somehow. I'm going to unsolder the coil here. It's soldered down to this little circuit board. I'm just going to take that off first and then uh, see whether I can slide the battery out. I'm just removing the charge coil now, although that's not even necessary because the whole unit will slide out if you release the tabs, but there's a, there's a locking collar at the top that has to come off of course i didn't know that at the time when i was taking this down so i took the the uh, charging coil off but it doesn't need to come off the entire unit will slide out of the body so don't you don't have to do this part but i did it anyway it just made it a little bit easier actually taking the taking that off actually makes it easier to change the battery anyway There we go. Now I got that clip out. Now we gotta get to figure out how to get the battery out of the bottom here. And still got a bit of a charge, but that charge will not last. Now there's a screw here. I don't know whether that comes out or whether this whole thing just lifts out. Whoops. I think it just pops out. Okay, that piece comes off. Now I should be able to release these catches and push the whole thing through, I think. Ah, there we go. That's how it comes apart. Okay. So that's the cell that's in there. I was expecting it to be a double A size, but it's not. It's actually a sub A. Interesting. And look at this. This is something I didn't expect. There's a little coil up here and this communicates with the brush head because there's got to be a there's a chip inside the brush head that tells you if you're pushing too hard that's how it detects it if you're pushing too hard when you're brushing it sends a signal to tell you to to back off that's how it communicates the, the special brush heads have a chip in them interesting i didn't know that i've never been into one of these things before until now that's kind of cool but there's the little mechanism and then you can
that's the mechanism but this is the battery that I need to change out and I was going to put a nickel metal hydrate battery in there but I just realized that I don't have one that's going to fit so hmm I'm going to have to try to source a small smaller battery I was going to put one of these these double A well it might maybe it maybe it will fit it might I might be able to put one of these double A cells in seems to be just held in place with a spring that fills the void so maybe maybe just maybe I will be able to put one in there so we'll take that out and that little cap that goes over the bottom of the of the, uh, of the and see these these are soldered in with tabs so hey wait wait a minute I'd probably be able to put one in let's just undo this battery first make it safe disconnect the battery here Okay, that should be dead now which it is and the other side of the battery connects down here under this display I think I could probably have room to put one of these other cells in so I'm going to put one of these nickel metal hydrate tabbed cells Well, if I cut the, the tab off the back of the battery here, worst case scenario, I'll have to source a battery for it, right? But this cell won't hold to charge anyway, so this one's done. So I just pop this cell out of here. Okay. This was a nickel metal hydrate battery, which is good. That's what I've got. I've got an M a little NIMH cell here. So let's just open this one up. So I have one here, and as you can see, it's going to fit quite nicely in there with some spare space so that spring can go back in to hold it in place. All I need to do now is just connect up the wires. I'll connect a wire to the positive terminal here that I can feed down through the board and connect it to the board, and the negative wire, we can solder it right back onto the tab that I've just removed. So let me just clean up the top of the battery here so that I can connect the wire up to the positive terminal take off some of the insulation that was on there and there's my positive terminal there that I can connect a wire to to connect it down to the board and then of course we'll, we'll, we'll re-insulate the top of it so that it's not going to get shorted out when I put this this on This fits over the bottom of the motor like that to keep the motor separate and push the motor in place as you can see I forget which way it went in it might have gone in this way like this I think it went in like that should look back at the video and see which way that, that came out of it like that with the spring on it like that that's how it went in pretty sure it went in like that So now we just need to connect the original tab from the positive terminal. We'll just connect it to this other one. I pulled it off the top of the other battery because it's uh, it was spot welded on. So we'll just we'll just tack that onto here. Hopefully that radio playing in the background is not going to be too loud that it's going to cause me any issues. I may just have to mute that sound or, or talk over it or something. But there's the positive terminal on, and as you can see, it's insulated around here, so I don't have to worry about it touching anything. Although I think I probably will put a, a little bit of tape around there as well, just to protect it from any possible short circuit. You know what? I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink tubing around there as well. So let me grab a piece. We'll put some heat shrink tubing right around this area here where it's going to be in contact with this metal spring, even though the spring is insulated on the other side. Piece of heat shrink tubing on here. Might help if the plug were to stay in. I plugged it in and it fell out. OK, 
Okay, that's taken care of that. I don't have to worry about that shorting out now. I can put the battery back in place. Yeah, that'll fit in there quite nicely, actually. With the... Uh, space to spare just in like just like that we'll get that spring in place I take it that the spring was put in place for different sizes of cells because obviously this was this was made big enough to hold a double a size cell as well as the the sub a size so this was made to put in different size cells when it was manufactured. I guess they just used whichever whichever cells they were able to source when they were assembling these. If they got the shorter cells, they put the shorter cells in. and If they had the full size cells, they put in the, the regular cells. But this spring should compress down quite nicely and go in place and hopefully it won't short anything out. like that. Excellent. Now I can reconnect the, the positive and the negative lead and hopefully this thing's going to work. There's my negative lead there. Probably going to show a dead battery because it's not been charged. So I'll have to put it on the charger, but it is showing that it's got connection. So now we'll just slide this thing back together. I guess this does clip on first before it's installed. This goes in like this, that clips in like that and the wires attach right down to the board and then this whole assembly just pops in like that Okay, that should do it. Now, if I plug this thing into power, it should light up that it's charging. If I put this on here and just set the base in here, and it is, it's indicating that it's charging, you see? Now it's flashing. Now it's charging. So it's working. Of course, it won't turn on yet because it's still, it's still too dead, but we'll let this thing charge for a few minutes and then I'll test it. We'll put the base back on here base screws back on just like uh, that so base goes on and then it just screws on using the okay I'm gonna let this thing just charge up for a few minutes and see if it will turn on so how you know it's charging is it's the whole battery bar is flashing there. When I put it on the base here, you'll see that the battery part lights up, but just the bottom one is now flashing. So it's now charging. I'm going to let it sit here and charge up for a while, and uh, we'll see how this thing works once it gets charged up. This piece on the top actually is just pried out. I thought it was screwed in, but it's actually not. It just presses in 
like that on the top. It just provide the watertight seal on the top side. And I finally broke down and got myself a proper shop chair. Because everything I've used in the past has been like an old office chair or an old dining room chair is always in the way. So finally I broke down and bought myself one that uh, actually should uh, make things a little more efficient in here. Okay, it's been sitting here for about 10 minutes or so charging up. And as you can see, the uh, charge is now at, it's at two bars. So battery's going to take a charge. If I press the power button here, it'll turn on. That's the four modes it has. And then put it back onto charge and it will start to flash, indicating it's charging. But that's how you replace the battery on one of these Oral-B systems from Braun. This one's called the Triumph Professional Care Series. And these weren't cheap. I mean, these things were a couple hundred bucks, I believe, when they were new. I didn't pay anything for it. My dentist comped me. Gave him so much business, I guess. When my uh, when my kids were little, uh, we gave him a lot of business, so he comped me that. So um, figured I'd try to keep it running a little bit longer, and uh, all it needed was a new battery. So if you've got one of these units, you know it's going to take a, it takes a smaller battery, but as you saw, there's plenty of room inside that battery compartment just to put a regular standard double A nickel metal hydrate battery and to replace this the sub AA that was in there. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.